Just over a year ago, we found out that Centene, the healthcare company, was buying HealthNet in a $6.3 billion deal that would make the combined entity big enough to challenge the five major health insurance providers, Aetna, Anthem, Cigna, Humana, and United Health. Since then, of course, we've gotten still more consolidation. Those top five insurers looking to become three, and the emphasis on looking, as Anthem tries to acquire Cigna and Aetna attempts to snap up Humana. Justice Department's trying to block these deals. Centene's merger with HealthNet, on the other hand, closed earlier this year, and the new Centene is becoming a leading platform for government-sponsored health care programs, as well as one of the largest Medicaid-managed care organizations in the country. However, it's looking like the combined company has a little bit of trouble here. Centene reported the first uh, its first quarter since the deal closed yesterday. Uh, Wall Street was not impressed. While the company posted a 20-cent earnings beat off a dollar nine basis, headlines fabulous, higher than expected revenue up 98% year over year, thanks to HealthNet swelling its numbers, there were some red flags. For example, the vast bulk of that earnings beat was the result of some positive exchange uh, counting. On top of that, though, Centene increased its substance abuse treatment cost reserves by 90 million, as well as recording a $300 million premium deficiency reserve for its businesses in Arizona, California, and Oregon. That's what upset people. Management also said they wouldn't be bidding for any of the assets that the major insurers tried to sell in order to get the mergers passed in front of the Justice Department. In response, the stock fell 8.5% yesterday. It got hit again today. To be fair, though, Centene had run up pretty dramatically over the past couple of months and years, by the way. This could be a situation where the expectations got ahead of themselves. And, of course, it's earnings season. There's a lot of confusion plagues all companies. So what do we do with the stock here? Let's take a closer look with Michael Nydorf, the chairman and CEO of Centene. Find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Nydorf, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Great Have to a be seat. Here. Thank you. Okay, in Ken, I want to tell you the, the timeline of, of my involvement with Centene. Yeah. I studied your, your uh, incredible June investor day. It just seemed like this is the one to buy. No government controversy. Everybody likes it. It's growing the fastest. Your return on investments, by far the best in the industry. Uh, and then yesterday when you report, uh, you, you delivered a good number, but you had charges. And it made me go back to the presentation. And the presentation said, and this was as uh, no unfavorable developments on the acquired health net medical reserves through May. And then went on and said that you guys are really unbelievable at figuring out reserves, applied Centene's reserving methodologies to health net's book of business. So my question is, how did you miss this one? We actually, Jim, we, we didn't miss it. There is a big misunderstanding here. It's okay, incredible. good. I'm glad I'm, I'm because really the stock's glad. down big, so now it's a chance. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Good. One, we said that we, the medical reserving was right. I said that again yesterday. Right. Okay. We're there. I also said that we would be doing a value analysis required under tax laws right. on, on the business and that we would determine what it is. The issue was that there were some issues in uh, California with the individual plan. There were problems in Arizona with non-profitable business. We knew this. You we did. knew this when we bought it. We knew that we would be doing this purchase accounting, which most people understand is an accounting technique. Okay. I'm but what it really it. says is that the California, uh, the Arizona business, by taking this approach, it's off the books. Well, we're not going to do it anymore. We're, at the end of the year, we're out of that particular Okay, product. so Arizona's resolved. We have that's that resolved. one discrete piece right. of business. Oregon, right. is that resolved? Okay. Or Oregon is not. That's a very small piece. Okay. And we're finalizing that. It's, it would be lost in, in rounding if we were a third of our size. Okay, but we can't round out California, so we got to understand California, I've do. said all along, we have an issue there. And we've been working very closely with the Department of Insurance. Before we closed, we were talking about okay. it that the individual plan there, the PPO, had a bad product design. And we knew that, and we've, we've already submitted the changes, effective January 1 of 17. They're going to be fully approved, so it's a competitive product. We're taking the appropriate pricing to get it right, and we said that. So when you have these issues, you take the PDRs, mm -hmm. premium deficiency, premium deficiency. Research, and that just eliminates it. We're the same company. We don't have more losses. We right. The cash flow? The cash flow. The only issue in the cash flow in the quarter was the timing of some of the states. Right, but that's okay. not this premium deficiency issue. That's right. It's not issue. the premium deficiency issue. So as far as I'm concerned, we're the same company. We've dealt with the issues that right. existed there. And I'm, I'm, I frankly was shocked. Well, okay, well, action. you know, there's people who know your company far better than me. David Winley from Jeffries likes the stock, okay? Yeah. He said, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm sorry just to focus because please, the, the growth of the please. company is great, but you're a very forthcoming guy, and we got to yeah, get this straightened out. I want to. Um, unusual misstep for management. We have held management in high regard for its consistent execution. However, credibility took a step back today 
at the, as the $390 million of reserves were significantly higher than Centene suggested in June at our health care conference. That's the uh, deck that I was referring to. Uh, Jeffries didn't catch it, and that was their health care conference? You know, what they didn't catch is these reserves, these PDRs, were not medical reserves, which everybody was worried about. Right. In other words, this not is, the MLR. No, okay. no this was not just the medical way of loss dealing reserves. with the, You're dealing with losses. These are going to be discontinued situations. Okay. They're going to be corrected immediately, not immediately, but starting in 17. Right. Okay, so what you do is you recognize it now. It doesn't hit the bottom line, it hits the goodwill on the balance sheet. Okay, so there's no hit to the bottom line. We beat consensus by two cents. Okay. We, the 19 cents. The, the incremental one time, we called that out as incremental, took right. no credit for that as such. Right. Okay? So, I mean, it, it was a clean, right. in my and, mind, and, very clean. And, I, you know, sorry to emphasize, but I mean, obviously, you're very good at the exchanges. Other guys are dropping yeah. out. You're unbelievably good at valuing Medicare med business that no one else seems to value. All that very much still on track, even with HealthNet, right? We won seven, we've won seven RFPs this year. Well, I guess, I mean, what my hope would be is that now, whatever misunderstanding there was or every mistake, the stock is now fully reflecting that, and it's back to just being in growth mode. Would that exactly. be a, a fair assumption? I think so. You know, I, I wish I didn't, if I could buy stock other than through a 10B5, right. I, I'd want to buy it right now. I mean, I, I believe that this is totally misunderstood. Okay. Okay? And as people understand the, the accounting of it, it's going to deal with it. Well, then I'm glad you came on. I'm glad. I mean, I'm going to, you could have canceled, right? You could have no. said, oh, well, I, I, this thing is just, I, it's too if, much for me. If you know, now, now that I know you, if I wasn't on, I'd call you and say, I need to get on. Fair <laughs> enough. That's what I wanted to hear. That's Michael Knight, our chairman, CEO of Centene Corporation, CNC. Hey, listen, he spelled it out. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.